Hi guys, Elf, Elfnet Gaming, and I'm going to take a little time and talk about these radios here you see on my desk, and about communications and preparedness involving communications. Um, there are people out there that like to stock up on everything from beans to bullets to condoms and whatever just in case something happens there's a shortage whatever people buy gold people buy bullets they buy guns <coughs> and they have groups and they you know in case something bad you know goes down like uh, economy or a war or something and it's just not a bad thing to be prepared for whatever whether it be natural disasters or whatever but you got to look at what's practical for, you know, what are your needs, you know, what, what do you want to go with? If you're not very tech savvy, you don't see yourself passing an amateur radio tip of any type. Um, you don't like a lot of buttons and knobs and all of that then your best bet for communications would be either a pair a set of FRS radios that's those little blister pack things you buy at Walmart um, they usually have about 14 channels that you can use legally with no license they look similar to this HYT they're really small the antenna does not come off uh, this is a commercial radio. this is an FRS but I said they look similar to that um, or one of these here, um, this is Cobra 29 LTD Classic, just a straight AM, 40 channel, unmodified citizens band radio, 11 meters. Um, you will need, of course, with something like this, I hardwired my power cable because I don't have this anymore for some reason. But you're going to need 12 volts DC or at least a couple of amps. And you're going to need an external antenna to go with this. They do make portable versions of this. And I'll say from experience that portables suck. This, however, can be tuned up legally by a professional <laughs> to stay within the legal bounds of power output to to operate and be a little better than what you buy out of the box. Usually out of the box, they're just fine, no. <coughs> so if you're not, the problem with an amateur radio license is everybody that uses it needs to, has to have a license, okay. Um, it, you know, if you're the guy in, the, in your group, in your survival group or whatever you call it, that handles radios, then maybe you're the one that needs to get that type of licensing just so you have it. Um, you might want to buy, if you don't have a huge budget allocated towards communications, you got, you know, these little things here. Um, you have Roshan and a Baofeng. This is a UVB5. This is a uh, UVD1P. Um, these are both amateur radios. Actually, this one here was type accepted for part 90. This model recently, I uh, looked it up. <laughs> of all things, it is okay to use with commercial, it seems. But they're, they're amateur radios. They have FM radios in them. This one has a little LED flashlight. Dual band. Set of text to read out on it. Yeah. I've got railroad stuff in here because I listen. I don't have any transmitting in there. But and these things are relatively cheap. This radio is about 30 bucks. This one costs more. It costs me about 108 and if you're gonna go and buying a cheap Chinese radio, I would recommend this brand because I've had this radio since 2011, and it's held up nice. This radio is about a year and a half old, um, thirty dollars thing. 
but yeah, those are ham radios. Not everyone in your group may be wanting to get an amateur radio license. So that's where your citizens band, uh, your FRS band type stuff comes in. But there's also another band, the, the GMRS band. Um, I don't know if this radio is is accepted for that. Somebody would have to look that up. It's an HYT uh, 320U. This one's fouled up. It won't turn on even though the battery is charged. But uh, a lot of your GMRS radios have FRS channels in them. The combo does have 22 channels. They uh, Midland just released a pair of mobiles. MXT 150 and an MXT 400. The GMRS band note you pay for license, it's $80, covers you and your whole family, group, whatever. You're good to go, and you can set up a repeater, etc. etc. <coughs> um, yeah, radios like this. These are ones I use in my business. Um, you know, I've got digital stuff too, but for mostly for when we're putting in towers, um, you know, doing linking, things like that. Or This is a business band radio. This is a commercial radio. Law enforcement, public safety slash commercial. It's not a ham radio, though you can put ham radio stuff in here, it'd be fine. Um, you know, here's an older model here. Same thing. Um, here's another one. I think these SP50s were okay for GMRS. You know, it's dirty. These have been sitting on a shelf. You can see the battery's dead. These have been kind of sitting on a shelf, just wasting away because I never use them, you know. But they're there. I have the chargers. The batteries are good. But these are wideband. They could be used with GMRS technically because they'll do the frequency, but they're not Part 95 compliant. Um, you know, you also got stuff like this. This is a part of my work radio pool, so... You know, I have all that stuff in these radios. You know, I got them labeled how I, how I want them, you know, labeled. But, actually, that's not GMRS. That's something else. But, there it is. I don't know all the details per radio what's accepted what's not okay I don't know I don't know exactly which models are type accepted I'm assuming that they're not but they're there in case I need them on the fly so and there's not very much selection of GMRS type radios out there that don't look like kids toys to be honest I mean I'm not going to carry around a child's toy while I'm trying to do business. It's not going to happen. But I also have licensed commercial repeaters on these things. So, <coughs> put these away. I mean, if you have a commercial license, and then you, uh, whatever. But I don't recommend commercial radios for prepping groups because... Mainly, you're going to need some kind of computer programming software to set them up. Um, usually, that stuff costs a pretty good amount of money. There are websites you can download this stuff from illegally. Uh, you can build programming tables at your own risk, at the risk of breaking the radio that you're trying to program. Uh, Motorola stuff, you'll need an interface box for the most part for older radios or any of these ribs. Newer radios have a USB interfacing on them. But you're going to have to, if you want to go the route of using commercial gear, you're going to have to make arrangements for 
carrying programming tables in a laptop. Yeah. Things like that. And I have a bag full of programming cables. I have cables for every radio that I own or have worked on. There's some more. Ooh. 1250. I just want some of my yellow ones. And I have a, a bag I keep all that in. There's also a rib. USB stuff is also USB 2 serial cables in there. All kinds of things. <coughs> but if you're doing all the preparing things and you don't want to use CB radio I'm not, not going to knock CB radio. CB radio has its uses. <coughs> but you need to keep in mind, CB radio, you're limited to about 5 watts. It's AM. You can get them with single sideband, upper or lower sideband. And your antennas can be quite sizable. Um, <laughs> I think 108 inches is a pretty good size for an antenna for 11 meters. Big stainless steel whips. They make big Antron 99, which is I think it's a 16 foot antenna base station antenna and they make all kinds of things for that and it has its uses but it may not be what you want just like for me uh, FRS GMRS radios is not what I want I would recommend that like I said before the person that handling radio communications in your prepping group get be the one to get the amateur radio license if they don't have it already maybe one other person could get one that is that you know that they if they think they can pass the test which the test is so easy a caveman could pass it basically now back when i took mine you know it was nowhere near as easy but and get something like this I would highly recommend a name brand like a Kenwood, an Icom, a Yesu, or something like that. But if you don't have the budget to throw three, four hundred dollars into a handheld and more into a mobile, then you can start looking at your little Chinese thing. Like I said, this is thirty, forty dollars for this dual band. Uh, this is by far a better brand of the cheap brands. About a hundred bucks for that, and they make newer models than this uh, D1P. So I think they got up to eight or nine now with those. Um, <coughs> there's also these, which the uh, TYT and HYT both make these. These are DMR Turbo digital radios i made a separate video about these this is the uhf version um, and this is pretty much one of the ones i carry because i got it my my main repeater system now is going digital so i got a bunch of these my yellow ones the job site stuff these are mostly just wider area communications um but yeah this is a really nice radio it's a multiple zone radio and if radio gets lost or stolen you can punch a code to kill the radio turn it off it can't be used um with digital you can send messages and all that stuff this is about a hundred dollars per radio um it's served me well pretty nice but every group should probably have something like this. This is a uh, trunk tracking multi-band programmable police scanner. I don't got any. I don't have any batteries in this one, but you can program it in, and you can scan different bands, put rechargeables in it, headphones, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. These are good to have. These are good to have for anything. I mean, because you can get the weather, you can get the police, all that stuff on there. So a good scanner radio would be good to keep too. Um, 
if you have some kind of retreat or base station, if you're an amateur operator, you're probably wanting, you probably already have a base radio of sorts or mobile mounted on a power supply. It might be multi-band. You might have GMRS programmed in it or the CB channels in it and all this stuff, even though it's not exactly legal to do. But in an emergency, go, you know, whatever. Um, if you're going to do GMRSing, secondhand radios work. If you're new in ham, secondhand radios work. This is a PM400 25-watt UHF mobile. It can easily be mounted on a wall in a car. It can be mounted on a, on top of a power. Yeah, it's a base station or mobile. Or you can go with something with a little more muscle. 25 watts and get a 40 or 50 watt CDM 1550 which has which is multi-zone this is a VHF high band version um, and you'll be able to put everything in groups then and, and do that kind of thing uh, about radio usage um, some groups might look into the MERS radios, but there's not a lot of there's not a whole lot of MERS radios out there. The multi-use radio system and VHF high band. I don't have anything for that myself. Uh, <coughs> I did, <coughs> and one oddity that I do have, but this is back from the golden age of radio, <laughs> is a Motorola MyTrek base station that has a MERS channel element in it and that's how I got it I didn't do this to this radio this is how I got it it's got 154.570 megahertz in it and it's on a 45 50 watt VHF base station radio and it works I mean I've checked it through a dummy load it works fine good receiver um but that radio is big. I might do a video on that radio at a later time. I've also got a uh, VHF low band on 39.5 megahertz that I got with that one. But that's that's for later. Um, I would say first starting out with communications, look at FRSCB radio and look into ham radio, of course. Because in the event of an emergency, FRS radios are only going to get you about a mile. And if this is your house, it's only going to get you maybe a mile radius. A CB radio with a good antenna can get you a lot further down the road. Plus, there are more, there are people that are on the road, over the road truckers, that have CB radios that you can get information from. Weather reports, traffic reports, or whatever. You know, if you got it in your car. So they, like I said, CB has its purpose. If you can get around the profanity on some of the channels and people running power, um, you could do, you could talk over at ionospheric skip with it if you got a good antenna and a base station. And thousands of miles away to people. Um, but in any emergency situations, like widespread natural disasters or something like that, amateur radio is probably going to be your best bet. And during emergency, there are ham operators out there that have CB radios in their ham rooms, and they listen to like channel 19 or 9 or whatever their locals talk on. They'll be listening there, and they can relay messages from there through the ham radio to officials like down at whatever the emergency coordinating office tent whatever will be listening to amateur and relay it on that way but always depending on the situation depends on if the phones are working or not um, as with any you know emergency situations and communications um, which is mainly the reason why I have GMRS programmed in all these radios I have. Um, if there's an emergency, there you have the right to use 
just about any means of communications to get help. Like, you could go, say, on this radio to the police band, if it's not digital, and call for help. If only if other means of communications are down. And when I say other means of communications, I mean cellular phones, internet, and landline telephones are down. Okay. <clears throat> All you have is your ham radio. Or a radio, it might be your dad's hammer or whatever. Ham operators will not harp on you about a license if you have a genuine emergency and you get on there calling for help. Okay, we're out here to provide help when it's necessary. Okay, if you don't have a license and you have a radio like <coughs> your dad or husband or wife or whoever's a ham operator you get in a, an accident they're knocked out your cell phone you can't find it the radio's there you can get on there and call for help but there's that um that that does not mean get on any radio band just because you're out of cheetos in a gaming session and because that's not an emergency So it's something to think about. Um, if you're not, like, like I said, if you're not very tech savvy, it all, all everybody needs a preparedness plan. And if you're running a group of people preparing for whatever it is you want to prepare for, you need to have a communications plan. Now, <coughs> all of these devices I've shown are subject to failure in the event of an EMP, whether that EMP is caused by natural phenomenon with solar weather or by man-made attack by high altitude nuclear weaponry. None of this stuff will work. So, you know, you might be looking at going back to pen and paper to get communications around. So, so it's always good to have a plan, and if radio plan fails, to have a backup plan. Um, I don't know what else to say. Um, if you're buying secondhand radios for GMRS stuff, um, like I said, I can't tell you what exactly is part 95 approved and what isn't in the United States I I just simply do not know that my brain is not a not the FCC database in other words what you're gonna have to do when you find a radio like say this P10 um, ask the seller to give you a picture of the uh, stuff on the back back here the label and you'll see an FCC ID. That FCC ID right there, and all radios that are FCC approved have an FCC ID. You can look that up, and that should tell you where the radio's frequency range, the power, the type acceptance, where you can use it, what type it is, yada, yada, yada. All that information's there. And anything that transmits or emits RF has an FCC ID. I mean, most computers, things like that. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's... Uh, there you do that. Oh, this battery's stuck on here. I gotta say about this radio here, it's a fucking battery. They... I'm mashing these down, but they don't want to release. And this is a bite that I have for secondhand batteries, which I don't think this is actually a secondhand battery. No, it is. Secondhand batteries, be aware that sometimes you'll run into problems, especially when they have that. But again, FCC ID right there. Just uh, get that information before you go buying radios. That way, if you're real adamant about type acceptance, most people that are going to be buying things like this, 
as long as they work that they can get a battery get it programmed and it, and it works and they can get it programmed on GMRS or whatever ham radio that's good enough because let's face it you'll probably use it during an emergency situation which type acceptance means squat so but if you're going to be using it on a regular basis in business with your family around the house or your ham operator then you need to probably think about getting the right kind of radio okay i don't really know of anything else if you're going to be the radio guy for your prepping group you need to get some other things like a dummy load a watt meter maybe some service manuals things like that but that's all you know later on down the road um try to keep it simple at first <coughs> just try to keep it simple um again just keep in mind what would be practical for you you have a group of say 10 people well you're gonna need 10 walkie-talkies probably maybe I don't know maybe eight nine maybe 12 you might want some extras but also when you buy radios <coughs> it's always a good idea to get an extra battery with it okay Nine times out of ten, when you buy a radio, especially when you buy new ones, they're going to come with a charger. Go on and pay the extra, get an extra battery, or order an extra battery from somewhere, and that way you got one on the radio, one in the charger, and they can be swapped out on the fly. You don't have to wait and things like that. And I tell people that with cell phones, you want to buy an extra battery for it, you know, things like that. But you know, good luck with that. Trying to find a charger for cell phone batteries. Um, I know they make them, but <laughs> just just some advice you know, that I want to share. Um, accessories, again, depending on your needs. Do you really need something like this? Do you need a headset? Do you need an earpiece? Uh, you know, make sure they go to the radio. Get one for the thing. Uh, batteries back to batteries one more thing about batteries <coughs> when you're buying batteries getting batteries for radios try 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 to get OEM stuff okay um, these aren't OEM but <laughs> you take what you can get uh, these these other name brand bad other off name batteries Try like for Motorola, you want to try to get a Motorola OEM battery, original battery, okay? And also try to get the highest capacity you can get. Um, if you can't, Power Products right here, they make a, a really good product. Um, I haven't really had any problems with the batteries sticking. Like, I've got some for these yellow radios, and they they come off pretty, pretty easy. I have no problems with them. I also got... Um, No, that's a. I got an OEM on this. I thought I had a uh, Power Products battery for that, but so I don't know what else to say about these radios. Um, you want to stay away from old stuff. <clears throat> the rule that I try to stick with <coughs> is that radio like this is pushing the limits of my usability. Of something that I would actually pay money for. Um, these radios here might sell for fifty dollars or better on eBay, but I would never give that for them because these radios were built in nineties. In fact, this radio here was built February second of nineteen ninety three. This radio, though it is still viable for some wideband operation, amateur radio and GMRS, if it's type accepted for it. I wouldn't pay for this radio because the battery for this radio is going to cost more than the radio. Um, and then you got to pay someone to program it and you might need an antenna or what. It's just the older ones, be aware of what you're getting into. Um, you also got some newer stuff here. Um, this one was built in 2001. 
this P50 plus this still falls within the realm of things I would use though this one here is really skating on that boundary um, but then there's the MT stuff here these MT 2000s are really good radios but they're also approaching their service date as well I think the ones I have here these model threes were built in 04 05 maybe um, I try to skate at that 10 near bracket with radios um, and, and try because anything older than that is going to start costing more than what it's worth um, but if you're into older radios I mean the radios that I would stay away from would be the what was it called the Genesis series being the HT600s the Motorola Radius HT600s or P200, excuse me, the HT600, MT1000s, things like that. I would uh, kind of veer away, you know, it's like the MX380s and, and things like that, the big brick, stainless steel brick area. Anything with TCXO crystals, ele channel elements, stay away from those. Anything with vacuum, to well, okay. If you're an amateur, vacuum tubes will probably be BB King. Will be King. Um, vacuum tube radio is good for surviving EMP stuff. But you got to look at, does the radio work? Is it going to be worth fixing? Is it even viable to fix? And how much are replacement parts? And you also got to look at, in the event of an EMP, there's not going to be any mains power for the most part. Would you even be able to run this radio? <laughs> Would you have enough batteries to run this radius to charge those batteries? So, you really got to look at all those variables when you're dealing with older, less efficient radios. Um, I would recommend, though, still back to the amateur stuff because, and this is going back to pure emergency preparedness something like this it's not exactly legal to do but there's no law saying you can't have it in there to monitor <coughs> but you can program your amateur stuff of course you can put in frs you can put in gmrs you can put in mers marine bands you can put all the other stuff in one radio and it would be like a standby thing if in the unlikely event something does happen where you need those services um, you'll have them in one radio as opposed to carrying four or five radios around on you you know <laughs> you can just have one dual band and have everything in it so that that's would be my recommendation. Um, since there's no emergency, keep things legal. You can put anything you want in these radios. Just don't transmit. Okay. <coughs> um, if it's an emergency preparedness radio, you'll probably have it in some kind of a bag or box with its batteries, accessories, chargers. Well, that radio you might want to have if it's yours and not one that you're going to give to someone else and this is how I would set it up say one like this I would have FRS radios in there to give to other people but me as the licensed operator I would have this radio I would have all the other services in this radio programmed in and ready to go in case I need them and that just makes good sense on itself that was a spider. Well, wow. okay. Hmm. A weird spider crawling. But, right. That, that just makes good sense. <coughs> and, you know, you can monitor. Nothing wrong with monitoring, right? I'm just listening. I've got the weathered stations in here. I've got the local Red Cross repeater in here. I've got all the amateur stuff in here. I've got my repeaters, my analog repeaters commercial in here. I got all six of my GMRS 
repeaters in here plus the standalone frequencies the frs stuff the mers stuff and some other frequencies in here for like there is a law common channel there's an, a fire common channel and ems common channel here that is actively monitored by the 911 center i have those in here with their appropriate connection tones and whatnot um and and this radio here would be useful it would be more useful than any of the other ones here and that could even be done with a little cheaper variant like this so but with that i've wasted enough time i'm gonna go i spent 30 minutes talking about radios jesus anyway i'm gonna go i'm elf elf Night gaming and if any of this was helpful leave a thumbs up leave a comment i know some of this stuff i said put in there is not legal i know some of these radios aren't type accepted i am fully aware of that i'm talking strictly on emergency communications here not day-to-day -day hobbyist or using at work or with the family in the park communications i'm talking about natural disasters a war or, or anything whatever emergency so anyway i'm elf with elfnet gaming and be sure to leave a like a subscribe a comment and i will see you guys in the next video